Hey guys, this is Zacharat's Letter. Welcome to my office. This is where all the magic happens, where I play Star Wars Squadrons. You'll have to apologize. This game really strains the uh, the office space I do have here. It's a little bit messy, much more messy than I'm comfortable with, but you gotta do what you gotta do. My office also isn't really set up for recording this type of content, so sorry for the audio and visual conditions, but given the fact that we're discussing hands-on throttle and stick, I thought it was important that we actually get hands-on and that I could show you guys exactly what I was doing, because it's one thing to say, go into the menu and bind something to, you know, F12, but it's another thing to just click the button over there. That was a little dark, trust me. There are buttons over there. Not important ones, though. Um, <laughs> so today I thought I would just kind of basically go through and explain what setup works for me. Now, of course, your mileage may vary. This is based on the kind of control scheme that works best within my play style. The number one thing that I recommend you do, go in, play story, it will walk you through all of the features of the game, both advanced and basic, and you'll figure out what works for you. Um, this is also being done on a Thrustmaster T16000M HOTUS system. Obviously, if you, a, if you have a HOSIS, which is a double stick, or a different HOTUS system, this may not work. So again, your mileage may vary. With that being said, let's take a quick look at both sort of uh, controllers we have here. The throttle, obviously, you put your hands on like this. It's a throttle. It moves up and down, uh, but it also has a lot more buttons than you initially think. It's got these little buttons here on the back, these two sort of binary on and off buttons. It's got a little switch here, which I love. It's got a little stick here. It's got these rudders, and it's got a bunch of buttons here on the side. And you may look at this and think, okay, that's one button, but really like, kind of hard to see. Each of these are four buttons because they're multi-directional sticks. I think these are just, these all just have four axes. Um, there's a, another one down there that's very hard to see. Then of course there's a button, whereas the stick has the trigger. I've got to be very careful. I was recording this, I accidentally entered a game. It's got the trigger. It's got these three buttons here. It's got sort of a little nub of a joystick. Then there are 12 sort of secondary buttons at the base. Again, it's pretty dark. We'll talk about those at the very end. Don't freak your, yourself out. Um, let's start with the stick. So at all times, you'll really have one hand on the stick and one hand on the throttle. It's not usually this, uh, it doesn't usually move around like this. There must be something stuck under there. But the key advantage that you have with a HOTA system over, say, a controller is that, let me just again be careful not to click anything. When you're on controller, you know, you're really limited in what you can do at any given time. You know, my thumb is responsible both for this stick and all these buttons. My one or two fingers is up here, and then my other fingers are kind of just sitting useless. When you've got this system, let's take a look at the uh, thruster, for example. Every single one of my fingers can do something and can do multiple things. So keeping that in mind, when it comes to the stick, I keep this to my primary features, the things that I'm doing all the time. Of course, this is fire, this uh, trigger, which is uh, button number one in the mapping. This I have cycle through targets. This is fire left equipment, which is usually my heel or whatever else. Sometimes it's another missile or whatever. And then this is my right equipment, which is usually just for my simplicity. This is usually my missile or my bomb or whatever else. This little stick up here, I think may by default, and you can see it lights up, which is very cool may by default be binded to look around, but this is one of the most accessible buttons in the game, or sorry, on the stick. So put it to something that you're gonna use all the time. For me, the obvious answer was power distribution. So if I flick left, that goes uh, power full to engines, right, full power to shields, up quite satisfyingly is full power to weapons, then you just fire away, and down is normalized power across systems. So I like this because if you wanna go full power to weapons, you just flick up and you can fire and you can do that all at the same time. Your thumb can very easily move around here. It's great. One other important thing to know is how the movement of the stick works. I almost forgot this. Um, this is gonna be obvious to many of you, but not for some. The stick not only moves up and down and left and right and you know full degree of motion, 
but also twists. This is important because the twist is how you roll in Star Wars Squadrons by default and under most setups, of course. I actually had to swap the roll directions to match it with X-Wing Alliance because that's what I was used to. But again, do what works right with, uh, with yourself. Um, let's move on to the throttle. And again, I'll just show you. There are a bunch of buttons here on the back. There are a bunch of buttons on the side. My, uh, my Go XLR is getting in the way. And of course, the throttle itself is almost like a button. This is how you change your speed, of course. And let's start at the back. So because my hand, or sorry, my fingers are always on these two buttons, I keep them the things that are very important. I use this for drift. So if I'm boosting, you know, I'm, I've got full speed, uh, or sorry, I want to boost. First off, I've got to click this just to initiate the boost. Or if you just want to do a boost without a drift, you click this once you get your full boost. If you want to drift again, you can click this. So you go into the boost with this. Um, you initiate the drift with this all based on one button, which is quite similar to how it's set up on the controller. But I find it just being sort of a analog click button a bit more, a bit simpler than clicking in on a joystick. This other button right here, which my pinky would be on, that's kind of a very dark scene there, is used for pinging team members or pinging things to your team. When you're in a campaign, if you hold this, you get the resupply. Um, but yeah, this is really useful because, well, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. This little switch right here, which only goes up or down. Sorry, you can't probably see like that. It goes up or down. I use that for the TIE Fighters emergency power shunting system, and it works absolutely perfectly. So I talked about the system in a prior video, but basically the TIEs can immediately move power between their engines and their weapons. This switch is perfect because it only has two states, up or down, and then it's neutral state. So if I want to shift power to weapons, just a quick flip up, I want to shift power to engines, quick flip down. It's perfect. Probably my favorite aspect of the setup. This little joystick here I've got set to free look. I think it works well for that because to be honest, the joystick is it's there, but it's not as accessible as this joystick. But looking around is also not very important in this game. I mean, if you've got VR, you'll do it, but otherwise, you know, not. So you can't really see here, but just generally my hand would be set up like this. If I really want to look around, I can. Otherwise, I usually keep this finger here and I'll shift my hand over, but whatever works for you. A lot of the control work gets done on these D pads on the side here. So usually I've got my hand like this. My thumb is available to, you know, hit either of these and even this one if necessary. Um, first off, this button right here is for countermeasures. I did that because that's what Ace Combat 7 does. I've got this set up to manage my shield. So if I want to set my shields forward, hit them forward. I want to set my shields back, I hit them back. If I want to normalize them, that's up. And I think right now I don't have anything set to shield down, but there's definitely something you could put there. If you've got a little extra command that you use all the time, feel free to put that there. You may also find it easier, depending on how your brain works, to think of the front of your ship as up. So maybe shields fully to front is shields up and then shields fully back is shields down. Again, that's up to you. You know, do what works best for you. This second little D-pad I use for my advanced targeting. Um, this button right here is the general cycle through things. But I've got several kind of other commands here. This button right here, the D-pad back, is used to target any enemy who is firing at me, which is a very useful command. This button right here is used to target anything directly in front of me, because sometimes you want to target a friendly ship or you want to target a capital subsystem or there's lots of fighters and you want to hit one in particular. Just hit forward right there. That's very useful in games like X-Wing Alliance where I've got it. I think X-Wing Alliance only uses a uh, stick. You can't use the throttle without kind of setting that up. So I've got that right here or something. Um, and then up on the D-pad is the advanced targeting tool, which is really useful. It brings up the targeting wheel on your screen and then if you want to target say objectives i think that's top so you select that with this and then you just let go so again you don't really have to take your hands off anything 
You don't have to think about it too much. And then you also have this fourth kind of direction down. I don't have this set up to anything right now, but I can see that being really useful for like, I don't know, maybe like a, a targeting feature that you use a lot and that you want quick access to. So an idea of that would be maybe target capital ship subsystems, because that's something you want to be able to do in the heat of battle. You know, you quickly click down on that. Now you've got subsystems targeted. It makes it all much, much easier. Um, but it's also really nice how all this works together. Say you're being chased by a pilot or an AI, or you're being shot at by a capital ship. You can target the enemy that was firing on me last. If it's a starfighter, then you can hit this button over here to mark it for your friends. And suddenly the ship that's tailing you is now marked and available for everyone to see, which is really nice. So you can see how this all works out really nicely. All the main features are within fingers length. Even the, the flare is, is very accessible and that's kind of at the bottom of the thruster. Um, so yeah, really great setup. You know, you don't even need to look at it all. It's all very, very intuitive. The only thing I'll say is I'm not using these big rudder pedals here, uh, or just rudders, they're not pedals. These big rudders here, and they're very accessible. So, you know, maybe <laughs> these control your shielding or something. This button right here on the bottom of the thruster or the throttle, there's a lot you can do with that. Maybe advanced um, voice commands or something or advanced uh, targeting. But there's also all these buttons on the throttle, which I've got kind of set up. So you can actually map every single aspect of that targeting wheel or the communication wheel to buttons here. So maybe you want to map a certain button to I need help. I don't really find that useful because I play this game pretty often in Discord with a large crew. Otherwise, I don't find that randoms help that much. So what I choose to use these buttons for, but really you could use this one, is targeting specific types of enemies or friendlies or whatever else. So maybe you play a game, or the current meta has a lot of targeting of the AI. So maybe you have this button right here to target only enemy AI ships, which you know makes things quite a bit easier. Um, or whatever else, you know, there's just 12 extra buttons here to do whatever you want with. There's a lot of versatility in this setup. That being said, I do still keep my trusty controller nearby, not for space combat, but just because the HOTUS I find does not work very well in the menus. It'll be like, use F9 to edit ship loadout. And I'm just like, I have no idea what F9 or button nine is. So it's just easier to use an Xbox controller. Uh, my keyboard has to go up there because like I said, I'm running out of desk space. Just to summarize, to quickly go over my bindings again, we've got um, cycle through targets, power distribution, um, left equipment, right equipment, fire, extra targeting communication options. Uh, this is just kind of another throttle you can use if you want instead of this one. Obviously this one's probably better because you have to take your hands off the stick to use this. Um, and then on this stick, we've got ping targets or communicate with team. I think if you hold this in, it gives you extra options. We've got boost slash drift. Uh, we've got the emergency power shunting. We've got look around. We've got shield options. So shield rebalance, shield forward, shield backward. Then we have target options, target the enemy in front of me, target whoever's firing on me. Um, target targeting wheel and then target capital ship subsystems then the flare and that's pretty much it there are other things that kind of take a secondary role in the menu that you can bind however you want but that's the majority of what i wanted to cover for this video i will see if i can get my where's my controller i will see if i can get my bindings and i'll show you guys also how you change your hoda setup as well you go to button assignments flight flight stick yeah it's kind of hidden in a few menus there's a lot you can see some things you can see here that some uh buttons can be accomplished so you can have a separate drift button if you really wanted to i like just the double tap on the boost that's what the combo button is um yeah and most of it works pretty well so if you want to just dumb fire the the left auxiliary it's not 
you know, a separate button. It's just clicking this twice. It's very similar to how it works on a controller. If you want to kind of take a look at any more of this, you can just pause the video and slow down. Focus shields. Convert power. That, I believe, is the emergency power convert uh, shunting that I was talking about. Yeah, you can see that some things... Yeah, these are some of the targeting options that you can set up. There's a lot you can do here. You can even set it up so maybe you're getting shot by missiles a lot and you're just really sick of it. Maybe that's this button right here and then you can try to shoot them down if you're a real hero. Yeah, there's comm wheel buttons that I've got. I think I've actually got my comms wheel technically down here. Don't really use it very often for reasons that I said. But yeah, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and this look at my, right now, because of Star Wars Squadron's quite cluttered office, my controllers and I say goodbye. I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'll be reading them all for some time. Until next time, though, guys, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.